Here's three of the most eye-opening tips and tricks that you can use when you're on a ketogenic diet. These are three tips that I've learned over the years that can help you feel better, help you get the most out of ketosis, and also make sure that you don't burn up too much muscle while you're in ketosis, or so we think. All right, so the first tip is simple. You need to be getting in enough salt. Let me explain how this works. You see, when we are actually in a carbohydrate-fueled mode, when we're consuming glucose and we're eating carbs, right? We have what's called muscle glycogen. Most of you probably know what glycogen is, okay? Glycogen is the stored form of carbohydrates that's in our muscles and in our liver. But what a lot of people don't know is that glycogen is transported in a liquid form, which means that for every one gram of carbohydrate that you consume, you hold between three to four grams of water, 3.7 grams of water to be precise. And you hold that water in the glycogen stores. So you're holding it in your muscle. Well, you start thinking about it. When we're in ketosis and we're depriving ourselves of glucose and we're utilizing ketones as a source of fuel, we don't have nearly as much glycogen. So when we don't have nearly as much glycogen, well, then we're losing that excess water. That might kind of make sense why when a lot of people first go on a ketogenic diet, they drop a lot of weight right in the first couple of days. Usually has to do with the water that they're losing through the glycogen that they're depleting. Now, when we lose water, we also lose salt. So what ends up happening is as we're excreting all this extra water out, every bit of water that we take in is generally going right through us because we don't have the glycogen to help us absorb it. We're losing the minerals along with it. And salt is obviously a very important mineral. So when we don't have salt, we don't have the thirst actuation. We don't actually have that triggering to become thirsty. The more salt that you have in your body, the more it triggers your body to become thirsty. So without the salt, you're simply not thirsty and you don't drink as much. Plus, when you do drink the water, you're not retaining it. So by adding a little bit of salt to the diet, you're sort of manufacturing that response. You're manipulating the body a little bit into thinking you're a little bit more thirsty so you consume more water. And then the salt is also going to allow you to retain more water within your body itself. A little bit within the soft tissue, a little bit within the muscle, and of course some within the blood supply itself. There's one other factor we have to talk about when it comes to salt though, and that's how insulin and salt work together. You see, when we consume carbohydrates, we have a high presence of insulin. Insulin tells the kidneys to hold on to salt. Now, when we don't have carbohydrates in the system, our insulin levels are low. So that insulin communicates with the kidneys and tells the kidneys to expel as much sodium as possible, simply because there's that correlation and that linear relationship between the two. So you have two reasons why you need to be adding extra salt to your food. Don't worry too much about the hypertensive aspect, especially when you're in ketosis, because you don't have the carbohydrates that are holding more water, so you don't usually have to deal with as much of that issue. Okay, the next tip is consume a lot of straight MCT oil. Now, I'm a big fan of coconut oil. You all know that, I'm talking about it in all of my videos, but I'm a fan of coconut oil more so because of the lauric acid and the small amounts of MCTs. When you're in ketosis, straight medium chain triglycerides are usually the better way to go. Now, believe it or not, if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're getting most of your fats from long chain fatty acid sources, okay, I'm talking about the things you shouldn't necessarily be eating a lot of, things like the cheeses, things like the super high saturated fats and stuff like that, you're gonna require 80 to 90% of your energy to be coming from fat, simply because it's harder for your body to break it down, so you need more of it. But if your energy is coming from MCTs, you only need 60 to 70% of your total daily calories to come from fat. So you need less fat because your body's more efficient at utilizing it. Medium chain triglycerides bypass the liver, okay? So they have this entirely different system. When they enter into the body, they are immediately converted into a ketone body whereas long chain fatty acids actually have to go through a process before they're ever converted into energy. So in essence, when you're in ketosis and you consume a straight medium chain triglyceride that's extracted from coconut oil, you are essentially giving yourself an immediate source of fuel. You're basically getting your body to operate like it's on carbohydrates without being on carbohydrates. Now keep in mind, coconut oil is great too, but there's some things that you should know about it before you just dive into just the coconut oil. Coconut oil is 35% long chain fatty acid, 50% lauric acid, and 15% medium chain triglyceride. So it still has the MCTs in there, just not nearly as much as if you were to go with a straight MCT. What's my third tip? My third tip is eat less protein. 
And all the fitness people out there, all the guys that are trying to build muscle are probably turning off the YouTube channel right now saying that they're going to just ignore me and not listen to me. And that's fine. You guys can stay blind, but I'm going to explain the science to you. See, a lot of people think that you need to have at minimum one gram of protein per pound of body weight. I've been telling people that this is incorrect for years, but now there's finally some studies that totally back it up. And especially when you're in ketosis. Because when you're in ketosis, if you have too much protein, you go into what's called gluconeogenesis. And think about it like this. When your body is utilizing carbs as a source of fuel, it's happy because it has glucose. But when you start pulling the glucose out and you run on ketones, it's still always kind of seeking some glucose. Well, if you have too much protein, your body will convert that into glucose and your body will thrive on it. And therefore, it'll run on that as the source of fuel instead of the fats. Therefore, kicking you out of ketosis and you're losing the benefit of being in a ketogenic state. Now, there's a study that I want to reference that allows this all to make sense and allows us to accept that we can cut down to 20% of our calorie intake coming from protein. What this one particular study looked at was two groups of individuals. Okay, All of them were resistance trained people, people that were used to working out. One group, they gave 0.61 grams per pound of body weight of protein. The other group, they gave 1.19 grams per pound of body weight of protein. Well, what they found after four weeks was that there was zero change in body composition and strength. Zero change, nothing between the two. And what they found is by testing nitrogen balance is that the ideal amount is between 0.65 and 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. And when you're in ketosis, it might even be lower because you have levels of beta hydroxybutyrate and you have levels of other hormones that are protecting your muscle even more. So you may be able to get away with literally even a half a gram per pound of body weight, which seems like so little. And you think you're going to waste away, but you're not. So there you have it. Three simple tips to making sure that you get the most out of ketosis so that you can wrap your head around the science and not just jump on the bandwagon with everyone else that's just telling you to eat a bunch of meat and cheese and get on with your day. There is some science behind it. There are some tips and tricks. And if you harness those, you can truly capture all the benefits that there are to get of ketosis. You don't have to oxidize your body with a bunch of crap food. You can do it right. I'll see you in the next video.